Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Dashboard Fridays. I'm Adam from Squared Up, and today I am on my own to talk to you about my power generation dashboard. Um, I built this dashboard for our ongoing uh, dashboard competition. Uh, build a dashboard in Squared Up Cloud, submit a screenshot, win a cool t-shirt. Um, but I built this one based on some technology that I use at home that I was interested to uh, to play around with, just generally sort of monitoring it and you know to see where I could get to with the Squared Up dashboard. Um, in this case, there's loads of um, neat monitoring going on. I get notified when things are outside of the, the limits that I think are good. And I've done a, some pretty cool stuff with SQL Analytics and data from sort of other sources to calculate things like forecasting. Um, so I'll walk, you through the, I'll walk you through the specifics in a minute. Um, it's worth saying at this point, all of the data, uh, bar one tile, all of the data on this dashboard comes through our AWS plugin using the time stream data stream. Um, I'll tell you a little about time stream in a second, um, but just to go right back to the source of the data, um, I use an app called Solar Assistant, which runs on a Raspberry Pi in my garage, plugged in old school USB console cables into my batteries and into my inverters. And Solar Assistant does the job of um, measuring um, things like battery state, current solar, you know, solar wattage, that kind of stuff. And it's got this pretty nice UI. This is my sort of go-to day-to-day for just a quick check. What's the state of my battery? How much solar are we generating? That kind of stuff. Um, and it also has charts built in for like historic views. Um, the keen eyes among you will have probably spotted the Grafana logo in there in the top corner. This is a really, really cool app. Um, the, and this this does give me sort of day-to-day what I want to see, but it's not configurable at all, unfortunately. And I, I can't do things like turn on alarms like you could in, in Grafana natively. And sadly, Solar Assistant don't expose this data via an API or give you access to the, the database they keep it in. Uh, but what they do give you is uh, an MQTT broker built into um, the Solar Assistant software running on my, my Raspberry Pi. Um, MQTT is a very common protocol used in sort of IoT applications. It is effectively just a live stream of messages. It's incredibly noisy. Um, and in fact, if I bring up uh, my MQTT client, um, MQTT works on a sort of a, a publisher subscriber model. So in this case, Solar Assistance, the publisher, it publishes topics and I can subscribe to those topics and get updates on them. So if I just hit connect up here, it will connect and immediately you will see this crazy sort of flurry of messages coming through. Um, every second, 150 or so messages get, get thrown through the through the MQTT broker. And it's basically every every measurement for every sensor. So in just the few seconds we've been connected, we've just about to pass sort of 500 messages, you know, multiply this by X number of you know seconds in a day by the number of days in a month, number of days in a year, that kind of stuff. And there are millions and millions and millions of messages being sent through. IoT use cases are incredibly verbose with this kind of stuff. Um, and so what I needed was somewhere to put this data. Um, I can't go back to the historic data. I have to collect it and store it somewhere. And when I was sort of hunting around, um, I came across um, AWS TimeStream. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it's effectively Prometheus, but as a native AWS service, it's just a serverless time series database. Incredibly high performance, obviously massively scalable. And being an AWS service, it is native to their platform and very easy to then integrate TimeStream into other um, other things you might be running in AWS. Being able to sort of dump historic data straight into S3, for example, is just a, a native feature. And I just like the, the simplicity of it. So I have a, an, I have a little app running again in my garage on a Raspberry Pi that's subscribing to all the messages coming out of Solar Assistant and just batch pushing them into TimeStream. Uh, so if we take a quick look at sort of what's in TimeStream, I have one database that I've just called Solar Assistant and it just has one table called metrics. So all the data is being pushed into one place. And if I go into my query editor, I've got a few save queries that I put together when I was sort of exploring this. Um, but just to sort of call one out, let's go for like the, this latest values one. This just returns data in a sort of a, a current state, if you like. It's going to give me the, the, the max value of each of the sensors um, within the last minute. Um, which is what I want to see, right, for the latest value. Just give me the latest for each sensor. And you can see in the data here, there are um, four columns. We have the device, the sensor, um, a numeric value, and a string-based value. 
and you know database schemas you can't mix strings and numbers in the same column that kind of thing um they're all in one table so i've expressed this as numeric values and string values you could break this out into multiple tables you know you could take this sort of way further than i have but all i wanted was just a simple database i could query from squared up and if i sort of page through this a little bit you can see the kind of information things like the voltage of each cell in the batteries the various settings on the on the devices you know which what operating mode the inverters are in um everything is in here that i want to know it's it's all the same data that's powering this this sort of main dashboard in, in solar assistant and i wrote a few queries that will return the equivalent to these charts as well so ta my time stream instance is costing me five or six dollars a month running in us east region um it's worth it for the you know to have the historic data you know in my own control and to be able to do cool things with it and squared up um so that that's the data um this query um when you're using a configurable data stream in squared up for any of our sort of database style plugins prometheus elastic for example it's usually just the case that you would just copy this and paste it straight into squared up and we'll give you the same results and you can then visualize them how you like so if i jump back to my dashboard um, this top row of tiles um, and these these status blocks here are just using that query I just showed you in time stream. They're just returning the, the latest value. So if I look at total load, for example, um, there's my query. That's exactly what I was just showing you. It's returning um, the data that we just saw again with the device, the sensor and the measure. And all I've done in Squared Up is used our um, built-in filtering to say, give me the data where the sensor equals load power and the device equals total. So when I look at the output, that's it's just basically filtered down to the one line that contains the one value I care about for, for this particular gauge visualization, uh, which is the total number of load watts at the moment. And I've then turned on, um, I've been able to set my, you know, configure my, my range. So 16 kilowatts of maximum possible load on my inverters so i've set the set this from zero to sixteen thousand, and then i've turned on monitoring just to tell me show me a warning when it goes above eight about you know more than half it's incredibly rare that it would get anywhere near that and then show me an error when it gets to twelve thousand. i'm only using that because i want to be told at twelve thousand. it's not technically an error when it hits 12 but i, I don't want to be notified in a in a different way just to, just to be told that something very interesting is happening in effect so these, all of these other gauges are configured the same. It's just that, that one, one query filtering down to just the one number that I care about. And then I've just added things like the percentage sign, the degrees sign, and again, set my sort of thresholds where I like them. Um, and from the other saved queries, you might have spotted a couple of other ones sort of in there. If I look at, let's say, grid voltage as time series, again, all these are doing is returning something that looks like time series data. So we have labels, timestamps, and values. And with those, we can then create line graphs pretty simply um, the config for these is is exactly the same as the others i've just put my query in because it's time series data squared up has defaulted to showing me the line graph all good right nice and easy to do um, the only other tile i wanted to call out specifically is this last one um, solar generation plus uv forecast um, i had this theory that i could combine uv forecast data from the open weather map plugin um, with my solar data to see, you know, to be able to see, like, should it be, should I be able to produce more solar power tomorrow and at what times of the day? Um, and it took a little bit of uh, research to, to figure out sort of what the UV index actually is, what it's a measure of, how it works. Uh, and then a little bit of tweaking based on things like the area of my solar panels and which direction they face and all that kind of stuff. Um, but in my SQL query, it boiled down to just a, actually a pretty simple, pretty simple sum of um, basically just give me my inverter values, um, label them up as east array and west array um, from my time series data, and then just join in this other data stream. And this other data stream is just the hourly UV index data stream from the open weather map plugin. And the object in scope here is a, a custom object I've made that represents where I live, Maidenhead in the UK. So this is just um, a custom object using our graph import plugin with the latitude and longitude of my house in it, and I can then use the uh, use that with Open Weather Map to get the to get the UV index for my exact location. And what the the sort of the the, the mathematics boiled down to was just take the UV index and times it by 480, and that's that was pretty close actually to 
I've been tracking this for a couple of months now. And it's basically just taking a number, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, the typical sort of low numbers you'd see for a UV index and turning that into effectively watts per square meter and then factoring in the amount of panels I've got, which way they face, the time of day, all that kind of stuff. 480 just seemed like a nice measure. Um, I started with um, sort of a little bit higher than that and then just sort of tracking it over time. I just sort of tweaked it and you know it's it's not exactly it's not rocket science it's not it's not going to get anyone to the moon this kind of stuff but it seems to work pretty well that the the amount of solar i can generate at any one time does tend to line up with the line which gives me confidence that tomorrow the amount of solar i can generate will will continue to line up with the line so in this case it was really just about finding something that seemed to work for me um, and in this case it does and you can see here at this point um only at the only at the very latest timestamp there's an overlap in the data you can see the, the solar potential amount there of 1861 watts and the West Array hitting 1457, the East Array hitting 1343. In the future, obviously, this is just showing the solar potential data. And in the past, it obviously just shows the actual solar data. It's only right now where there's a little overlap of real data and forecast data. But it seems to work. And I really, really like what it, what it tells me. I find it like incredibly useful to have that information. Um, so yeah, that's it. I could literally talk about this for hours and hours and hours. I could probably do a whole series just on, on solar panel technology and nerding out, but I won't. I'll save you from that and I'll go ahead and wrap us up. So if you are still here after all of that talking, um, thank you very much. And you can check out um, other submissions to the competition, other really cool dashboards that people have built over on our dashboard gallery at squaredup.com slash dashboard gallery. And if you have questions about this dashboard, monitoring, squared up, SQL analytics, anything you want to ask about, head over to Community Answers, 3,000 or so members um, who will jump in your questions and give you answers. They'll help you troubleshoot things. It's a really awesome community. And that's community.squaredup.com. So yeah, check that out. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and come back next time for something probably a bit more business related. Thank you. Thank you.